All right, so we saw it's super easy to load and display an image, um, but what if we want to use more than one? Um, that seems like a thing that we would want to do. Um, luckily, it's really easy. So building on this idea from before, um, we can expand our sketch. So we can create two variables, load them in, and all that stuff. So we'll um, let's actually start by uploading our images. So again, I'm opening this little sidebar. I'm going to create a folder called Assets. And I'm going to upload a file. We can actually do two at once, which is really great. So I'm going to look in here, throw my images in, boom, boom. And again, we wait for that little check mark to appear. It doesn't always quite work, but we can test it out and make sure everything's good. If there's a problem, you can always delete the file um, by clicking the little down arrow here and delete it and then try re-uploading it. So I've got my two files here. Um, and then I need to make two variables, one for each one. So I'm going to say let uh, woman, we're going to use that image from last time. And then we also have a cute little puppy picture. Um, now you'll see the way that I've listed these here um, on a single line. This is a shortcut. Sometimes it's a good idea. Sometimes it's not. In this case, um, it's OK, I think, because they're both the same um, type of variable. They're both holding the same kind of thing, pho a photograph. Um, it wouldn't make sense if one of these was a photograph and one was um, a number or something like that. And, you know, it depends on who you ask. Some folks might say it would be better to say uh, something like this. Either way, it would work. I like this shortcut. I think it's a little cleaner. Um, also, when you, there's a cat wandering around down below, so he may kind of randomly, <laughs> randomly jump up. We'll see what happens. Um, Okay, cool. So I've got these. Next, I need my preload function. And um, same as before, I do load image, the folder, and then uh, this is my test.jpg, which we're gonna use for a bunch of things. And then puppy, puppy.jpg. Cool. And so now um, these are gonna be loaded. I'm also gonna, again, change my canvas size and add no loop. I think the cat, the cat just left. Great. Um, so these are all loaded up and uh, let's just run this. This is a good idea. You know, you don't want to um, write a whole bunch of code and then run it and hope everything works. It's a good idea to like um, do iterative design where you uh, write a little code, run it, see if it does what you think it's going to do. So I'm just going to run it, see if we get any errors looks good. We're obviously not seeing the images here because we haven't displayed them yet, but we're not seeing it yell at us for anything. Um, so next, let's go ahead and um, try resizing these images just so that we have them. So um, just like before, you know, last time our variable was called IMG. Um, in this case, it's called woman dot resize, and we can make it the size of the screen. We could also then resize puppy to be a different size. And these are totally separate um, variables, totally separate objects in our code. So we can resize them to different sizes. If we wanted to see the size, um, we can also access that. So we can say console.log. Um, and then we can use this thing called dot syntax. And we saw it last time with this dot resize command. Um, dot syntax is like attaches to a thing in our code um, and is a command built into a specific part of that. So we actually also saw it console.log. Um, console is this thing down here and .log is a command within the console object that lets us display text. Um, so we can get the width and the height of these. So I can say uh, woman.width, woman.height, for example. And now when I run this, um, we're gonna see it's gonna print out 400 by 311, which is what we we're expecting. Um, we could do this with a puppy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so now, again, we can just display these as usual, which is really nice. So I can say um, image woman zero zero pops up, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we could also do this within a for loop. So if we, um, you know, again, thinking towards collage, we may want to do many of these. So I can um, say maybe I want to have 10 puppies. More puppies is always better. And then, um, you know, a random number between uh, zero. So our X position, we want it to be random. But um, this is a good thing for us to think about. So if 
our random number might be between zero all the way on the left side. But if we made it between that and the width, then our image is going to get drawn off screen, which is, you know, maybe it's not a big deal, but it's probably not what we want. Or imagine it's here and it gets cut off. Again, maybe not what we're after. Over here, it's going to be drawn like this. Um, so what makes more sense is if we know the width of this image, then we can make its position the width of the screen minus that width so that it's always contained on screen. So instead of doing zero to width, I can do zero to width minus puppy dot width. And this is where being able to access the size of this is really, really helpful. Um, and then we can do the same thing for y. So y is going to be between zero and height minus puppy dot height. And then we can do the image puppy at x and y. And now we get 10 puppies. Pretty cool. Run it again, different spots. And you know, if we ran this enough, we would start to see that, in fact, nope, it's never going to be cut off on the right side or on the bottom because of this. So that's multiple images. There's other ways that we could do this if we had, you know, 100 images or something. Maybe there's smarter ways. But for our purposes, just having separate variables is a really pretty easy way to do this. And um, yeah, we can uh, draw all these images. It's pretty great.